In this video, we are going on a Cantonese food tour with my local friend in Guangzhou, China. Cantonese food is world famous and I tried it before outside of China. So now I am very curious to finally try authentic Cantonese food. We will go to different spots around the city. Wow, I'm trying so much delicious food here today and guess what? She wants to take me to another place. She said we are not finished eating today. So how good is authentic Cantonese food? Let's find out. Feel free to join. And I have just left my hotel here and I am on the way to meet my local friend Alisa who is going to show us around today. And yeah, this is her hometown so she should know the city quite well and yeah, we're going to try lots of food together with her today. What's interesting here is that the metro station is basically like a shopping mall. This is all underneath the main road. Wow, it's like a, almost like a city underneath the city you know this is just any random metro station here okay and i found my local friend alisa but she doesn't really want to be in the video and that's totally fine but we're going to enter this mall right here now and then she will take me to a restaurant here so we have karaoke machines here we have dinosaurs hanging on the wall i have to say chinese malls are quite impressive there's a museum inside here oh you can do ice skating here even wow have a look at this there's an ice arena here in the mall and you can do dinosaur riding here. You can uh, play with VR here. There are VR playstations here. Okay, so we just uh, choose four different items here. Only four because we have more food to try later today. But while you're waiting here, you can uh, enjoy some tea. And what we are doing here now is called morning tea here. What is the Chinese word? Zhou cha. But it's not about tea, it's more about the food, right? Yeah, yeah okay. So the tea is just on the side. So apparently it's tradition to eat this as a brunch kind of, so in between breakfast and lunch. And I just learned how to read the prices here. So we have an explanation here. So this symbol is 10 yuan, this one is 20 and so on. And then I can see, for example, here at the end, there are these symbols, which are the prices. And then this one, for example, looks like this. And it is this one here, 26. That's how I can figure out how much are the prices for all of these. All right, so we have a bowl here. And this bowl is here to uh, wash the utensils that we are going to use. And you don't wash it with water here, you wash it with the tea. So the tea that we have here is also used to wash everything. And the first two out of four meals have arrived already. I think this one is filled with uh, shrimp. And these are pork ribs, I guess. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm gonna start with this one right here. This one was extremely delicious and so were the pork ribs that I tried afterwards. But the next dish that was coming is probably going to be one of my new favorite dishes in China. But this actually looks very delicious. Beef inside? Oh, I like it. Oh, I think this is my favorite out of the three so far. Almost like a little piece of cake. Oh, so there's sticky rice inside and chicken, right? Sometimes they have mushrooms inside. Oh, that looks good. So we have egg yolk in here, we have chicken and mushrooms in here. And then a little bit of a brown sauce. And then together with the sticky rice. All of this food is so delicious. But you know I already liked Cantonese food before. And now I come here and can try the authentic Cantonese food. Which obviously is even better compared to the Cantonese food you can try abroad. Especially the egg yolk. It's a really nice and unique flavor to it. So wow, that was a delicious lunch. And we are going to visit three more places, so there's more delicious food waiting for us. And we paid in total 150 yuan for this lunch. And while we were on the way to the next spot, we came across this shop. Okay, we have Chinese tea here being sold by the streets. Hey ho, hello. I would like to try your tea. Ah, she has it right here. A bitter tea, okay. Oh. Okay, and then she's filling up into the plastic bottle right there. Oh, it's hot. It's warm. <laughs> Please translate. What's going on? No, it's like uh, we have this tea. It's like normally yeah. it's like um, better if yeah. you go for this. Yeah, but May that's yeah. better. But right now we are having the. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I, I okay, think I try. It, maybe it's too hot to drink. Let me try. Ooh, very bitter. Oh, <laughs> it's a very bitter tea. Do you really think this is bitter? Yeah, it's not bitter. Oh, I think it's very bitter. For her, this is not bitter. The Yaba Mei is the way more. But I can drink it. It's not bad. It's just bitter. She wants to give you to try that. She wants to give me the strong one? Yeah. Oh, okay. She would like me to try the, the even stronger one. This is Yaba Mei. This is Yaba Mei. <laughs> okay. So after 
after drinking this yeah, that made, yeah. you take this. Is this something sweet? Yeah. Okay, so you drink something bitter <laughs> and then you take a sweet candy. Okay. <laughs> All right. I drink it like this. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, she said cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Oh, this is way more bitter, yeah. I prefer this one. Oh, this is a very bitter tea. And the other one had a slightly sweet taste to it as well. And this one is not sweet at all, it's just bitter. Thank you very much. Cheers. Oh. So this is sweet. To, uh, no, this is not sweet, right? Oh, what is this? This is also bitter. It's like special taste. Oh. This one was the best one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And we came to another part of the city. Guangzhou Lu, I think is the station name here. And there's a restaurant here that Alisa would like to show me now. The road here looks interesting. Looks like a local alley. Oh, we can get coconuts here. Hello, Nihao. You have coconuts? Oh, he's selling uh, just a core of the coconuts here. In Southeast Asia, you usually get it with the outside shell. How much is one coconut? Six. Six. What's the difference? The big one is 10 yuan, the small one is 6. You want to share? No. Okay, then just the small one. Small one, yeah, please. One. 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 She doesn't want the coconut. Ah, he's using a screwdriver mm. here. Mm. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Mm. Screwdriver and then a knife. Mm. Ah, and then there's a hole in the coconut. Okay, six. Yeah. Okay, and just like that, I pay via my phone for a coconut on the streets. Okay, let's try a coconut here. Shishi, thank you. All right. Oh, very small coconut actually. I think this is the smallest coconut I ever bought on the streets. Hello. Hello. Ni hao. Hello. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao ma. Hello. You want to say hello? Me hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, you guys know I always like to walk around also like the little local alleys, experience the local life in each city that I visit. All oh, the strawberries they have here, they look very good actually. Okay, she's going to weigh it. 10 yuan. 10 yuan? Oh, 10.3. Oh, there we go. She washed it even fast. Oh, Shishi, thank you very much. Got some strawberries, got a coconut here. And most importantly, got some impressions. Check it out. This is a very cool local street here. The residential buildings here and then there's a street market basically right in front of their houses. This reminds me a little bit of uh, Bangkok. Some areas in Bangkok look exactly the same. So a little bit of uh, Southeast Asian vibes here actually. Oh look how big the strawberries are here. It's cheaper and bigger. It's cheaper and bigger. Oh I've never seen a strawberry as big as this. What are they putting inside the strawberries? What are they spraying on it to make them so big? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think strawberries get as big as this naturally. Wow, have a look at this monster strawberry here. Or maybe the Chinese strawberries are just very big naturally. What's interesting here is that these buildings look very old. So this is a big contrast to the modern sites of China we have seen before. And then also there's a very expensive German Porsche here parked right next to the buildings. But wow, this is an interesting area to walk through. Also have a look at this building here. On these buildings, I should say, they look very old. So this is a very different site, especially coming from the area around the Canton Tower now, which is a very modern area with all the huge skyscrapers. Now we're experiencing the, the contrast here. Very cool. Yeah, this looks interesting here. Have a look at this. Every balcony has a fence almost. Oh, and they're also separating their trash here, which we also do in Germany. Okay, we have a local Chinese street food place here. I would call it almost street food because people are sitting outside. That looks very interesting. We're going to try something here now. Okay, so we found a little restaurant inside uh, one of these small alleys here. And it's actually a very cool place because it looks almost like a... It reminds me a little bit about Vietnam. Sitting by the side of the road on small little uh, plastic chairs like this. So a little bit of uh, Southeast Asia vibes here. And we're having this interesting looking dish in front of us now. So it's fish skin with peanuts. Okay, first time trying this. Oh, maybe you don't like it because it's... Chewy. It's chewy, yeah. Let me try some more. It's not really bad. Maybe I just have to get used to the taste. It's just uncommon, unknown. It's very chewy. It reminds me a little bit about eating jellyfish. If you ever ate jellyfish before, the texture is very similar. Okay, so but now I'm very excited for the dessert that we are having here. And actually I tried this dessert already about a year ago when I was in Macau. And it was probably my favorite dessert that I ever ate anywhere in Asia. So let's give it a try. Wow, I'm really looking forward to this. Oh yeah, it 
taste like the one I had in Macau. It's a creamy milk pudding, but it's not a super sweet flavor to it. The type of dessert you eat and you don't feel very bad afterwards because it doesn't taste like a huge calorie bomb. It's just a soft, slight milky flavor to it and then this pudding consistency. Yeah, I still think this is my favorite dessert anywhere in Asia, maybe even anywhere in the world. All right, that was delicious, but that was not the last food we're going to eat today. All right, we're at another dessert shop now because she would like me to try another dessert. Are you a YouTuber? Yeah, yeah, I make YouTube videos. It's a famous traditional Chinese dessert. This uh, shop looks like it's very famous. Yeah, so, it is. So many people here, so it's not your first time here? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Okay, okay. Okay, we are ordering once again via the phone. So you scan a QR code, this code right here. And then you have the menu on your phone and you can order via this menu. Oh, that was quick. Literally two minutes after we order it, the first meal has arrived already. So what actually is this? It looks like it's uh, red beans, but it's sweet, right? Okay. It's interesting because usually I associate red beans with savory dishes and not with a sweet dessert. It almost reminds me more of a savory dish than a dessert. Also doesn't taste that sweet to be honest. So this is also actually a nice dessert if you don't like to eat too sweet. Even less sweet than the one we tried before, the milk pudding. And here we have the second one, which actually for me looks basically the same as we had before, but uh, Alisa said it's a different one with ginger inside, right? So the taste should be a little bit different here. Oh, and also it's more uh, watery. The other one was a bit thicker. Okay, let's give it a try. The very strong ginger taste to it. Almost reminds me about some dishes in the Thai cuisine. In Thailand, I also use a lot of ginger. And actually you can almost drink it. It's almost uh, fully liquid here. I think I do taste a little bit of lemon as well here, but I just imagined that uh, the red bean dessert goes well together with this actually. Okay, so this was another interesting food experience. Wow, I'm trying so much delicious food here today and guess what? She wants to take me to another place. She said we are not finished eating today and she's laughing. <laughs> okay, let's go to another place and eat more. Okay, and one taxi ride later and we came to a park where apparently we can also find food. It's this park right here. <laughs> there are even people singing karaoke here. Oh, they have a little screen here as well. I think he is right. Look at this, how beautiful it looks here. I really like the architecture design here. Everything nicely lit up. And then there's a little river flowing through here. And actually along the river here, there are some little food stalls that we are going to check out now. Okay, here we are. We have some food right next to the river here. And then there are some uh, tables, so you can sit down here as well. Intestines and beef soup here. Oh, what is this? Oh, is this potato? Radish. Radish? Okay. I'm going to, uh, to try the fish balls here, and this is probably pork ball. What is this here? Okay, can I get one? one here, yeah. Okay, I don't know what it is, but I'm happy to try it. Okay, I think she's going to cut it with the scissor. Ah, okay, okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. You're cutting it mm. here? No, oh, okay, okay. That's okay. Not one, 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 one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think she means that I have to take the whole piece. Okay, okay. Oh, you understand what we say? Yeah, okay, okay. Please translate in the comment section. Okay, okay. I think it's sesame. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, okay. Ketchup? Okay, okay. All right, so this is uh, our final meal of today. But what a beautiful location. This is actually very romantic to sit here with all the lights right by the river. I've never tried this. You've never tried this? No. Okay, it actually it looks a little bit like egg. There's not a strong taste to it. We have a Cantonese. Mm. Cantonese dish. Yeah. That's like a um, crispy goose, siu ngo. Yeah. But this one is for the um, vegetarian. And actually, it's not bad. It's a bit oily, and there's not a really strong taste to it. I can't really describe the taste. I don't really know what it tastes like. Like an oily dough, but they're savory, not sweet. And then we have the curry fish balls here, which I tried last year in Hong Kong already. Mm -hmm. I should try that with the sauce. sauce yeah. Okay. Together with the chili sauce. Oh, that's that's very good. Yeah. And then this is beef or pork? A beef. Beef. And then we have beef balls here. Let's add some ketchup. Ketchup doesn't sound really Chinese to me. Sounds like a very Western thing to add to the to the beef. Oh, oh the beef ball is very good. Oh, 
I really like the beef balls, to be honest. Okay, she's already closing here, but I haven't paid yet. How much money you get? You can just take it how much, how much you get. And I get 10 back, I think. I think she means I get 10 back. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. okay, so the total price was 44. Okay, that was a delicious day here exploring Cantonese cuisine. Thank you, Alisa, for showing me around. And if you are curious to see my previous video where I explored the futuristic side of Guangzhou, then feel free to check out the video right here. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode from China. Ciao, guys.